thanks for coming to my talk. Yes, I want to show you a small Raspberry Pi cluster, but also there are some other uh, Intel machines in there, and I can demonstrate you how to use Docker Swarm and how to use this small device um, to bring it to a meetup and show how orchestration works in the real life, because you can't unplug your nodes in the cloud. We've built a small device here so we can um, unplug cables later on. Yeah, my, I'm a Docker captain and also Microsoft MVP because I'm very interested in Windows containers as well. But in my spare time, I started with the Raspberry Pis with a hybrid team uh, building a SD card image especially for the Raspberry Pi to get started with Docker very easily. So, um, the Docker Swarm here, we have called it a Swarm to Go or a Pi Cloud. Um, we want to show them our customers because they are on on premise and in local data centers, and we want, as a developer, want to push software with Docker, with the new technologies, and going back from uh, dedicated VMs where you install your software manually and update it to a much more easy um, orchestration here. And this hardware I have brought with me, there are five Raspberry Pis in it and two up boards, they are called. So I can also run just normal images from the Docker Hub because it's a Linux Ubuntu system with four gigabyte of RAM and we are just able to run Redis or MongoDB on it and everything. And we have also put some LEDs on there. We will show it, I will show it to you later on, um, how the Docker Swarm works with failure scenarios. That was our first setup here, just uh, buying some pieces in the company and plugging it together and trying out how we can build it. Then the next thing was how we can build a housing for it so we can fit all pieces into it and how do the cabling and, and so on. And we went to a fab lab at one Saturday evening and one of my team has knowledge how to use laser cutters and he designed all the drawings for the housing. And one idea was that we can replace all nodes very easily. So they are plugged in with small riser cards here and after some hours, we had our first housing and the first test that the cabling works very well. Then the next thing was, and if you're interested in how we've built this housing, it's also open sourced. Not only Solomon open sources, we also open source our work we can share with the community. And you, find, you can find the um, PDF files and SVG files and build it on your own as well. So the next one was um, you have to put an operating system on the uh, devices and another challenging uh, piece was how to get GPIO ports to drive the LEDs uh, worked in swarm mode. And as well as this cluster is um, built from ARM CPUs from the Raspberry Pi and Intel CPUs um, we are very interested in creating multi-architecture Docker images. That's coming probably in the next DockerCon meetup, um, how to build that. But I can show you that here also. There are some, also some open source repos. As I've said, I really love to automate things. We just took the standard Raspbian uh, repo from GitHub, forked it, and added uh, some build steps to install Docker on it so we can just flash it and have Docker ready installed. As well, we have a 64-bit operating system running on two of these nodes to show you also the 64-bit uh, Raspberry Pi 3 with a real 64-bit operating system. This is built from another Docker captain, Dieter Reuter. He's also from the hybrid team and 
I'm using this on two of these nodes here. And the idea was um, this small data center should be provisioned very easily. So the idea is you just flash the SD card image for the Raspberry Pi and we are using cloud init as probably AWS uses it in the real cloud um, for this use case to insert the SSH keys so only you have access to these data center nodes. This is also built in these repos. If you want to look up, ask me and I can show you the, the source code how you can do this on your own. So the next thing was um, getting the LEDs uh, lighting up in the swarm mode because all the demos for uh, LEDs uses the def mem um, access, but you need privilege. You need uh, the privileged mode from docker run dash dash privileged and that is not available in docker swarm mode for good reasons. But we thought about I want to show you some LEDs in, in swarm mode. Then I found some examples how to use um, a better version with the GPIO mem. That's a kernel module, so the programs can only access the GPIO ports through the memory and not the whole memory. I thought, yeah, it's working, but um, you had to use the device flag with Docker Run, and this is also not available in swarm mode. And then I, I didn't give up and found a solution because these LEDs can be uh, driven with uh, any speed of the um, uh, clock rate, you can just use the file system to push your bits up and down and tell the LEDs which color they should have. And that's, although it's very slow, it's uh, fast enough to drive these eight LEDs per machine. And therefore, you only have to use the dash volume option and that is available in swarm mode. So I will show you the real demo here. Okay. Go to the command line. Um, what I already have started is the Docker swarm visualizer with the seven nodes here. Three of them are the Raspberry Pi 32 bit. The next two are also Raspberry Pi, but with 64 bit. And the last one, the red and the white node here, are the Intel versions. The nodes have um, colored names as host names, as I also have um, some colored patch cables and power cables. So we can easily drop one node off the Docker Swarm. But first I have to start a service there and we will see some, some lights in a few seconds. So we create a small service called a rainbow. And I have to use the mount option here. This is just a normal mount option for the Swarm mode. Here's the image name in a specific version. And I will spin it up. And in this case, you will see on the blue node, there will be a, a rainbow displayed with the LEDs. So the next thing I can show you is to how to scale the service if you want more colors. We use scale rainbow, for example, three nodes. So the Docker Swarm will start the same service with three replicas on other nodes. And if somebody wants to try out some, some failing scenarios, I can show you which cable to, to unplug. Does anybody want to touch it? Chris? <laughs> Come on. So we can, we have a, 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 the blue, the brown, or the green one. And what we can do is unplug the power cable, for example. Um, probably the blue one, just the, the first node. And the Docker Swarm will 
the, the hardware is off, it's, it's uh, for sure. And the Docker Swarm will recognize this in a few seconds and spin up the missing replica on another node here. Now the visualizer shows it's uh, turned off and it will spin up the third on an another thing. I will plug this in so we have a healthy swarm in some seconds again. Another trick we can do, for example, the green node is running the service. We can unplug the network. Yep. And see what happens then. Because with this hardware visualizer, you can demonstrate a little bit more than the software visualizer. Because the software visualizer just recognizes the node green is also unhealthy and dropped off. And Docker Swarm then wants to try to start the third replica again. And what we now have is four nodes running this container because the remaining container has just dropped off the network connection, but the container is still running. So what happens if we plug the cable in again? That will take only a few seconds, and the Docker Swarm will recognize the node is up again, and we'll also see that is, there's a container too much, and it will kill it automatically. So you can see Docker Swarm really helps you um, scaling your service to a specific replica count and just help uh, to the desired state. Thank you. Okay. And I have another demo with LEDs. I will switch the display to um, another monitor here. All the lights are out, and we have on each node this service running. And what I can do now is I can create a, for example, a web server. I am using a Who Am I server here. So it's just a simple web server that just responds with the node name of the container. And I'm using also a specific version here. And what does the a monitor does it, it displays one container is one LED, and it's starting one yellow LED, I think. And as I have uh, 56 LEDs, I can scale up a little more now. So we use Docker Service Scale. Who am I? First, we are doing seventh one, so. The LEDs on each node goes to yellow. And now let's scale up a little bit more. And you see Docker Swarm in action. OK, all up, up and running. Uh, and the next thing I want to show you is uh, a rolling update. Um, this demonstrates, for example, a big cluster of web servers where your thousands of users are using this service at the moment, and you want to ship a new version. So we can use the docker service update command. There are some nice options here. You can specify the number of parallel updates. The docker swarm will stop five containers here in parallel and replace it with a new version. I have to specify another version here and we want to update the Who Am I service. So let's see what the Docker Swarm is doing for us. He kills the containers, and the new ones will show up as blue LEDs. So you can really see which one are the new versions, which one are the old version, until all the containers are replaced to the new version. And while this is doing, the, your user still can use the web service with the cluster and the routing mesh and everything that uh, has Docker Swarm built in. So, another short demo, we scale down. First to seven, let's see what's happened. Boom. <laughs> and what else I can show you, but not, there's two less time here. Um, to do it here live, but in the slides. 
as these upboards also have um, the Intel CPU, and I have read that there's uh, the possibility to install Windows 10 on it. I tr really did that, and as I'm working with Windows containers, I also install Docker and containers feature, and Hyper-V, as you need Hyper-V on Windows 10 to run a server core or a nano server Windows container. And on this small device, it's really possible to join the Swarm as well. And I did that in advance, and also with the Who Am I service. And as you can see on the slide here, um, when you access with, uh, for, uh, for example, with curl, you get a random um, node here, and sometimes you get, really get the answer from the Windows node. So you can use a mixed cluster with Docker Swarm to put some Windows workload on specific machines, and the other ones are Linux workload. That brings us to the images, but I don't go into detail here. There are some GitHub repos where you can look up them, um, how I have built that in the cloud for the rainbow, for the who am I, and for the monitor. And the monitor is not here, but I can send you the link if you ping me on Twitter, for example. So that was my demo about the Swarm cluster. I hope you have liked it, and thank you.